Here is a brand new $80,000 all-wheel drive Marvel. It's packed with a dozen computers, multiple terrain response modes, air suspension, and a sticker price that rivals a small condo. And on this moderately difficult trail, it's stuck. Its front wheel is shoved high into the air, spinning uselessly. A perfect example of high-tech frustration. This is a Jeep Wrangler, and it is not stuck. On the exact same obstacle, the Jeep simply crawls over it. The difference isn't in the software, the horsepower, or the luxury. The difference is a crude, heavy, simple piece of metal that dates back to the 1940s, a piece of technology that Jeep stubbornly refuses to get rid of. It's called the solid front axle. And if you've ever driven a Jeep on a paved highway, you know it. It's the reason the steering feels more like a vague suggestion than a command. It's the reason a sharp pothole on the driver's side seems to rattle your fillings on the passenger's side. And it is the direct source of the single most terrifying experience a Jeep owner can have, the infamous violent and uncontrollable death wobble. On paper, it is ancient, uncomfortable, and inefficient. Nearly every other 4x4 manufacturer on Earth, Toyota, Land Rover, Ford, General Motors, has enthusiastically abandoned it for a modern, comfortable, and precise independent front suspension. So why, in an age of electric efficiency and high-tech comfort, do Jeep fans not just tolerate this ancient technology, but passionately demand it? Is this just a case of blind brand loyalty, a stubborn tradition? Or is this flaw actually a genuinely superior piece of unseen engineering? To understand the Jeep's defining feature, we must first enter the archive for its rivals. This is Independent Front Suspension, or IFS. It is what's in 99% of the cars on the road and in almost every modern SUV and truck, from a Honda CRV to a Ford Bronco. The name tells you everything you need to know. Each front wheel is independent of the other. They are connected to the vehicle's frame by their own set of control arms and axles. When the left wheel hits a pothole, it compresses its own spring and shock, and the right wheel remains completely, blissfully unaffected. This is fantastic for comfort. It's fantastic for high-speed stability on a rough road. And because the steering components are fixed and precise, it's fantastic for handling. On the road, IFS is superior in every measurable way. But here is its fatal flaw when the road disappears. When an IFS vehicle approaches a large rock or a deep rut, it has a seesaw problem. The left wheel, for example, will hit the rock and be forced up into the fender. Because the other wheel is independent, it does nothing. The entire body and frame of the vehicle simply tilt and as the left side goes up, the right side's center of gravity pivots, lifting the right wheel off the ground. And a tire in the air, no matter how much advanced traction control you have, is a tire with zero traction. It spins uselessly. The vehicle is stuck. Now let's look at this Jeep. The solid front axle, or SFA, is in comparison a dumb piece of steel. It's a simple, brutal, and brilliant lever. The two front wheels are bolted to the opposite ends of a single solid steel tube. This entire tube, which contains the differential gears, pivots as one unit from the center of the Jeep's frame. Now, let's run that same scenario. The Jeep approaches the same rock. The left wheel hits the boulder and is forced up. But because it is bolted to that solid tube as the left side goes up, the tube pivots and mechanically forces the right wheel down, shoving it into the ground with the full weight and leverage of the axle. This right here is the holy grail of low-speed off-roading. It's called articulation. This single mechanical property is the first and most important pillar of why Jeep fans demand the solid axle. Articulation means traction. A tire in the air cannot pull you forward. A tire pressed firmly against the ground can. The solid axle's entire design is a mechanical cheat code to maximize the time all four tires are touching the earth. It allows the suspension to flex to an incredible degree, contorting to match the shape of the terrain, all while keeping the body of the Jeep surprisingly level and stable. Where that high-tech $80,000 SUV is spinning a wheel in the air, the Jeep is still gripping, still crawling, and still in complete control. That is the first reason. The second pillar is durability. This is the unseen advantage that veterans of the trail understand. 
An independent front suspension system is a complex, almost delicate network of components. You have an upper control arm, a lower control arm, multiple ball joints, a steering knuckle, and most importantly, two CV, or constant velocity, axles with fragile ribbed rubber boots. It's a symphony of parts working in harmony. A solid axle is a giant steel pipe with a gear in the middle. Now, which one would you rather smash against a 2,000 pound boulder? The solid axle is brutally simple. It has far fewer moving parts to fail. The differential, the mechanical brain of the axle, is protected inside a massive, thick cast iron housing that's designed to be used as a skid plate to be dragged and bashed over obstacles. The axle shafts themselves are thick, solid bars of steel protected inside the main tube. An IFS failure on a remote trail, a broken CV joint, or a snapped control arm is often catastrophic and unrepairable, leaving you stranded. A solid axle failure, which is far rarer, can often be limped home or even trail fixed with basic tools. It is the very definition of rugged. This leads directly to the third pillar and the one that truly explains the fan devotion, simplicity. Because the axle is a simple self-contained unit, it is the gateway to the Jeep's entire culture of modification. It is quite literally a blank canvas. If you want to lift a solid axle Jeep to fit bigger tires, the process is beautifully simple. You just install longer coil springs and longer shock absorbers. You can get three, four, even six inches of lift in an afternoon. Now try to lift an IFS equipped truck. It is an expensive geometric nightmare. You can't just put in a longer spring, doing so would throw the alignment and more critically the angles of those delicate CV axles into a severe bind and they would break almost immediately. A proper IFS lift requires dropping the entire front differential with a complex system of brackets, installing new longer steering knuckles and replacing the control arms, all just to maintain the correct factory angles. It is a complex, expensive, and limiting process. The solid axle invites the owner to build their own ultimate machine. It's not just a part, it's the foundation of a multi-billion dollar aftermarket ecosystem. It's automotive L-E-G-O-S, O. Oh. But here is the plot twist in the archive, the detail that proves this is a deliberate, calculated choice by Jeep. Jeep knows how to build a comfortable IFS-equipped vehicle, they have been doing it for decades. In the 1990s, the Jeep Grand Cherokee used a solid front axle, but as it moved uptown to compete with the Ford Explorer, Jeep gave it an independent front suspension. The Jeep Liberty, the Jeep Commander, the modern Grand Cherokee, the luxurious new Wagoneer, all of them use comfortable car-like independent suspension. Jeep's engineers are not stuck in the 1940s. They build and sell hundreds of thousands of IFS vehicles every year. The one vehicle, the single nameplate that carries the entire soul and 80-year heritage of the brand, the Wrangler, has never, ever been allowed to change. This was put to the test when Ford revived the legendary Bronco. Ford's engineers made a different choice. They gave the new Bronco an independent front suspension, and it's fantastic. Ford chose to build a vehicle that was better on road and optimized for high-speed desert running, much like their F-150 Raptor. In doing so, they created a brilliant product, but they also left a wide-open gap in the market. Jeep, in response, didn't panic and copy them. They doubled down, proudly marketing their ancient solid axle, cementing the Wrangler as the undisputed king of a different discipline, low-speed, technical, impossible rock crawling. So why do Jeep fans demand the solid front axle? Because it isn't just a piece of metal, it's a promise. It is a physical 80-year-old unbroken link back to the original 1941 Willys Jeep that stormed the beaches of Normandy. It is a clear engineering statement that this vehicle is not a compromise. It is not an SUV designed for the highway that can also go off-road. It is an off-road machine first, and its on-road flaws are not bugs, they are features. They are the daily, tangible reminders that you are driving something authentic, something purpose-built for a mission. The ancient technology isn't a flaw, it's the entire point. It is, and always will be, the soul of the Jeep.